Thank you so much for joining us today. You know, today we're going to meet two amazing young girls whose lives have been brought together by some unbelievable circumstances. I want you to take a look at this. Crystal and Christy, friends for life. They're not old enough to drive, to vote, to passers-by. It might look like the pair doesn't have a care in the world. No one would know that the two came face to face with brutal and almost certain death. That they watched their loved ones perish before their eyes. But not only did they survive, Crystal and Christy fought hard to make sure their assailants wouldn't hurt anybody else. Well, the two girls that you just saw have survived the unthinkable. And 16 year old Christy is here to share her story with all of us. But before we meet her, I want you to take a look at this. Stacy and Christy Reed, sisters and friends from the first moment they met. Stacy, the eldest by two years, and Christy seemed always side by side. It didn't appear that this bond would ever be broken. January 29, 1999. Paul Powell broke into the Reed's Virginia home, brutally stabbing Stacy in a jealous rage. Powell waited for Christy to come home from school. Then he slashed her throat. One sister died, the other one lived. But the nightmare was far from over. Please welcome 16-year-old Christy to the show. I should first say that, you know, we all applaud you for your courage to be here today. And I really mean that. Um, you, it was a typical day, right? Mm -hmm. Came home from school. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you tell us what happened? And then um, I came home and I went to get my key and then I put it in and he opened the door for me. He who? Paul Powell. Paul Powell. Yes. So you walk up to your front door, go to stick your key in the door, and there's a guy there. Mm -hmm. He opens the door. Yes. And did you think that was a little odd? Or... No, because he used to like come over and hang out with Stacy. So I kind of, you know, just like, okay, he's over here hanging out with Stacy. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think any different of it. Now this guy wasn't dating your sister. No. He was a guy who was pursuing your sister in a way, right? Yeah. Kept pursuing her. So you see him there, and what was your first question? Where's Stacy? And what did he say? He said, in her bedroom. And you proceeded to do what? Walk, get my stuff and walk in the house. Mm -hmm. And um, I walk in, I go down the hallway, and I looked in her room. She wasn't there, so I turned to go in my room, and she was laying on the floor. Laying on the floor what? In my right. bedroom. Just... And tell us what you saw, because you... I really, I don't, okay. I don't remember. Okay. She was laying on the floor. Mm -hmm. You knew something was wrong. Yeah. Immediately. Um, a lot of blood. Okay. You obviously turned. Did he follow you down the hall? Well, yes, he did. So he saw that he, you saw. Mm -hmm. The first thing he said to you. He said, "Go downstairs." Go downstairs. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, were you fearful? Did you think that a fight had taken place? What did you think happened right now? You're walking down those steps. What was going through your mind? I don't remember what I was thinking. No. I just, it was like so much. I got you. you went downstairs? Yeah. You, into the basement? Yes. The and then what happened? Yeah. Told me to take my clothes off. Let's stop there. Um, I don't think, like, all the detail and all that is really necessary. Um, this man brutalized this young lady. And then, after he did so, he tied you up. Yes, with tied my shoelaces. Your shoelaces, hands and feet. Yes. Did not someone knock at the door? Yes, my friend Marky. Now, why is that? You were supposed I, to come home and go over to this friend's no, house. No, I told him to come over so we can hang out and stuff. Did you hear anything that happened when your friend came over? Did you know anything? No, okay, I so didn't. your friend came over and obviously yelled for your name. Yeah, but I didn't hear him. Not, nobody responded, so he turned and left. Yes. What do you think would have happened if your friend would have come in the house looking for you? I felt that he was going to die, too. Paul would have probably killed him. Yes. Paul went upstairs reacting to that, turned around and came back down. And mm -hmm. then what did he do? Well, see, when he tied me up, when he went upstairs, I could, like, get my hands free, but I tried to um, scoot to hide, but then he came back downstairs, so mm -hmm. I got in the same position, and then um, he strangled me. With the shoelaces? 
I guess. I were really you, don't know what it was. And you were still pretending to be out? Or did he think you were awake? Were you awake at the time? Did he know you were awake when he came back downstairs? Yeah. Okay, so he strangled you, strangled you with probably the shoelaces or his hands uh -huh. to the point that you passed out. Mm -hmm. What was the next thing you remember after passing out? My stepdad coming home. Did you realize at this point in time that he had cut no, your throat? No, I didn't. And I only say, I want the viewers to see, just he slashed your throat how many times? I don't know. You don't know. I um, had 60 stitches, though. 60 stitches in your throat? Yeah. He stabbed you twice in the stomach? Mm hmm. Um, and basically left you there to die. Mm -hmm. He slipped my wrist too. Slipped both wrists. Mm -hmm. Your stepdad comes home. You're lucid. You're awake. Mm -hmm. Did you even look at yourself? Could you look down and I see? Can, I was numb everywhere. No. So. The next thing you know, they have you in a helicopter. Do they not? Mm -hmm. To medevac you to another to a hospital. Yeah. This has not been that long. Mm -hmm. How are you dealing with? I have my moments, but I, usually, I get through it. Mm -hmm. It's tough. You had to go testify, mm -hmm. did you not? Yes. So how long after you got out of the hospital before his trial, before you had to go to court? Oh, it was like a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah, because they like kept postponing it or something like that. And during that whole period of time, did you think he was going to get away with this? Or did you think you'd no, be No, but I thought he was going to get out and come after me again. Did you? Yes. They asked you to go to the courtroom and actually testify. Um, a lot of adults won't do that. What makes you so strong? I don't know. Yeah, you do. What makes you so strong? I don't know. I just felt like I had to do it to be there for my sister and stuff, put him away for what he did to us. And put him away you did because you know what he was sentenced to, right? Mm -hmm. What was he sent to them so they know? Um, the death penalty two life sentences, and two fines of $100,000 each. Thank you. you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm asking you some tough questions, and questions that most adults sitting on the stage can't answer, but I'm asking you another one really hard. Um, even with that, what does that do for you when it comes to thinking about your sister? You think there's justice there? No. I think that he should die the way she died. What he did to me, too. Yes. It don't, doesn't do nothing. It's too easy for him. You'll probably die of a lethal injection in your state, mm -hmm. right? Um, just, you know, I, I almost feel like, have you had an opportunity to just really just tell people what your sister meant to you? No. Why don't you tell us what she meant to you? It's kind of hard. I know. But you know the reason why I ask you is because I think this tape, this show, you can use forever in the day in remembering her the way you remember now. I know it's hard. But go ahead. You tell us. Tell us about your sister. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I loved her so much. <laughs> She was always there for me. She was like my role model. And you know, when I, when I said to you earlier that I know you've been strong and everybody around you wanted you to be real strong so you can get to the trial, you can get to all those other things. But now it's time for you to take a minute for yourself. This is the kind of thing you need to talk about. You need to talk about her. You need to talk about what happened. You need to get this out so that down the road, 10 years from now, 11 years from now, this isn't coming back to haunt you even more. Okay? I'm gonna try to help you with that, all right? Talk to your mom and dad about it. We'll see if we can get you some help with that, okay? I'm gonna take a break. And this, I'm gonna take a break, but I really want you to please show this young lady some love for coming here and doing this for us, please. Gotta take a break, we'll be back right after this. And I can remember him taking my hand, and he told me this. <laughs> Stacy was gone.
talking today to two young ladies who have been through more in 12 and 16 years than most people on this planet go through in a lifetime and survived it and survived it very well. Um, I don't know if a lot of the adults in this room could have had the wherewithal to pick themselves up off the floor um, and even in the midst of being injured the way you were. He stabbed you twice. Stabbed this young lady twice in the stomach, so far and so deep that it was about a half inch from your spine, was it not? A centimeter. A centimeter from her spine. How close? The, one little ha half a centimeter further, and we might not be talking to you today. And then still had the strength to go to court and face the face the person accused and make sure he got put away. Please welcome Christie's mom, Lorraine, to the show. <laughs> I, it's like. I wish, I wish I could say that you're just extremely proud of your daughter. But I there's am. pride and then there's the pain that goes along. Yes. You gotta, when did you find out what happened? Um, her incident happened around 3, 3.30, mm -hmm. 4 o'clock. I was called at work around 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And the call came to you and it said what? Because it was a little confusing, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh, there was a Prince William County police officer on the other end of the phone and he said, um, are you Miss Reed? And I said yes. He asked me if I could come home, and I asked why. He said that he had one of my daughters, and he needed me to come home and take care of the situation. He said, I have one of your daughters. One of my daughters. And immediately, what went through your mind? Where's my other one, correct? Well, the first thing I thought was, OK, one of them got in trouble. Mm -hmm. And it's probably something piddly, you know, no big deal. Um, he again asked me how soon I could come home. I said, 20, 30 minutes, depending on traffic. I was fixing to walk out the door anyway. And I told him this, and he said, OK, fine. And I said, wait a minute, which, which daughter do you have? He said, well, I'm not sure. I don't have a name. And I said, you don't have a name. You have my daughter, but you don't know who you have? He said, well, no, I'm sorry, I don't. I said, well, is she tall, skinny, blonde hair, braces? He said, yes, ma'am. I said, that's Christy. I said, OK, fine, I'll be right home. Did you not think to ask about your other daughter? No, it didn't even occur to me. Okay. Yeah, I was just so taken by this conversation. Sure. I thought the first thing I need to do is get home immediately. Finally, I pull onto my street. It's blocked off. There's barricades. There is cops everywhere. I see ambulances, fire trucks, lights. Just all the way down my street, there's lights. I jump out of the, the truck and I start going toward the house, and that's when I see the yellow tape, police tape around my house. Around your house. Around my house. And then that's when I totally lost it. I started running toward my house, oblivious to everything else, thinking I had to get to my daughter's. I see my husband running up the street toward me with a police officer behind him and another person, which I later found out was a chaplain, which I didn't know at the time. And I can remember him taking my hand, and he told me this. <laughs> Stacy was gone. And I, I asked him, where did she go? And he said that she was deceased and then that they had taken Christy to Fairfax Hospital because she had been brutally attacked. And from this point, it was a matter of trying to get to see Christy. Exactly. Meanwhile, she is in ICU. Right. Actually, she was in surgery for five hours. Mm -hmm. I, and um, it required how many stitches in your neck? 60. And how many staples? 25. 25 staples in her abdomen to close it up. All that being said and done, she then stepped up to the plate to put this man away. And for that, I guess I don't know if there's some odd kind of justice that would be some sort of justice in a way, but it'll never bring Stacy back. 